Hey, I'm Mike Lemon with Cyber Safe Teen. Probably the, one of the biggest decisions you have to make as a parent is how do you safely give your child a cell phone? There's so many issues going on with, with predators, with, with sexting, with bullies, that as a parent, you want to make sure your child has a phone, but not just a phone, but a safe phone. And so today we're going to be talking to Shelly Delane, chief mom from Pinwheel, about Pinwheel phones and what makes Pinwheel phone not just a safe phone, but a safer phone. So Shelly, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, Mike. I'm very excited to be here. I'm a real big fan of your organization and all the training you do. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, can you tell me how you got the title Chief Mom? I got the title Chief Mom at Pinwheel because when I first found Pinwheel, it was as a customer. As a mom looking for a phone for my daughter, I'm a single mom, and they were an early stage startup when I found them, and they were founded by dads, but there was no mom on the team. And I said, you can't do this without a mom. <laughs> and I believed in the mission and I believed in the team. So I dove in and helped. Absolutely. And I think you're so right. Like we talked about just kind of before uh, we started the, uh, the the video here is even on our the Cyber Safe Teen Nation group, it is a probably 86% mom. So it is very important to have the kind of the mom's, uh, the voice, the mom's eyes and what's going on. And so can you kind of tell us, we're going to be talking about kind of what makes pinwheel different? What makes it safer than, say, an iPhone, safer than an Android? Uh, but can you kind of just kind of give us a summary of the first topic you think uh, moms need to know about, dads need to know about? Absolutely. The first thing that I feel like is important to understand about getting your kid a phone, and this is one of the things that I love about pinwheel, is that you have to understand that even though this is a very simple looking object. Digital literacy is way more complicated than being able to tap on a screen and make the device do things. This is actually a really complicated thing for kids to learn and understanding that there are skills that they need to develop and things that they need to be aware of is really the most important thing. And recognizing Absolutely. that we are the first generation of parents to really have to deal with this. So I love that Pinwheel is grounded in the research of how smartphones impact child development. So that's the first thing that I think of is just understanding that it's a set of skills that kids need to learn. And what type of like research uh, goes into uh, what you all do? The research behind Pinwheel is vast, and I'm still personally looking for ways to help share that with parents. But if anyone ever wants to nerd out with me, I'm available. Um, but we have a therapist council with um, therapists who specifically work with children. We work with the Digital Wellness Lab that is a collaboration between Boston Children's Hospital and Harvard Pediatric Psychology, and they're studying all of these things and lots of researchers and child development experts and education folks, just people who understand how children learn everything with a specific eye toward how is technology affecting that development. And then that all informs what Pinwheel does. So everything that is contained in the Pinwheel system is grounded in understanding something about the way this should work for kids. That's, that's awesome. I mean, it's just, you just don't think, oh, this would be a good idea. That'd be a good idea. But you actually go to the people who are dealing with the kids, who are researching the kids, and, and, and get your ideas validated uh, through them. Exactly. So uh, what about uh, the pinwheel as a teaching tool? How is pinwheel a teaching tool? So one of the things that I think about a lot when I think about teaching a phone is making real world comparisons that helps me to think about what it is that I'm doing with my child and in talking to other parents. And I like to think about things as simple as when my child learned how to cross the street, I only let her do the parts that I knew she was ready to do. Like she was a baby. I carried her across the street. She got a little older. She could walk across the street, but she was going to be holding my hand. I was not gonna let go of that hand for a while. And we talked about, hey, you gotta look this way. Do you see any cars moving? You gotta look this way. Do you see any cars moving? 
And it took us a while of doing that before I was comfortable letting her cross the street by herself. But even then I watched from the corner for a while. And then finally now, like in the neighborhood, she can cross the street to go to the park and I don't even worry about it because I know she's gonna look both ways. If she sees something wrong, she's gonna come back in the house and get me. And she's going to do it safely because she knows how we've been through that process. And one of the things that Pinwheel allows for and helps parents do so easily is to limit the phone function to only what the kids are prepared to deal with right then. So like safe list is a feature that is really important in that. And yeah, that so is explain that. Explain what safe list is. I think it's a huge, huge piece to what makes Pinwheel so different. I agree. Safe list is definitely something that separates Pinwheel from most other things out there. And safe list is on the Pinwheel phone, it can only call and text numbers that the parent has approved. So there's the remote parent caregiver portal where you configure the phone and set things up. And in that portal, you put in the people that the phone can call and text. Your kid can't call and text anyone else. And you can limit which contacts they can call at what time. So a lot of kids run into the problem with smartphones about staying up all night texting with friends because it's hard to resist that impulse, especially if a friend texts them at midnight. It's really hard for a kid to self-manage not responding right then or not staying up all night. But with Pinwheel, you can schedule it so you can't call any friends after bedtime. They magically come back the next day, but it helps kids <laughs> to have that boundary in place until they learn the habit of doing it themselves. And it also yeah. helps you know as a parent who they're talking to and to monitor those conversations and how their communication skills are developing. I think what you just point you brought up is so important is kind of doing this in stages. Like you're talking about how you teach your child across the street. Well, my boys, uh, they, they know head on a swivel. And so yes. they just start looking both ways exactly. as soon as they start crossing on. But it's, it's that, that's kind of, you know, training through increments, you know, going from one stage to the next stage. And it, I, I, I love you know, how you use that kind of real world experience. We use a lot of uh, training person, training your kid to drive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we don't just throw them the keys. We, uh, we teach them to drive, teach them the laws, and then they have same thing. They have stages. They have the permit. They have to take tests. They have to drive so much with you. Make you make sure that they're okay and they're doing well. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to learn until they eventually can drive on their own. I think yeah, it's a it's a perfect perfect example. Right. Uh, one of the big things that we see uh, right now, and, and I'm sure going forward, is that there's so many different apps. And it's so hard for parents to be able to figure out which app is okay, which one's not, and really decide uh, what app is all right. But, you know, they don't know if it's safe or not. So how do you all help with that? Oh, yes. And this, I will tell you from my own experience and from talking with, oh, my gosh, I've had this conversation with hundreds of parents. Here's what often happens. Your kid gets a couple apps. You research the heck out of them. You examine them. You read all the reviews. You compare across different sites. You really take care to notice. And then it gets really tiring because it's a lot. And there, it's hard to find information. And it's crazy. So eventually parents are just like, oh, yeah, it's fine. And that's when trouble starts to come in. And one of the things that I love and I'm passionate about with Pinwheel is that there's no app store on the phone itself. Kids don't have access to browse through apps and start begging for things. They don't know what's available. It's not on the phone. There is a curated app boutique in the parent control portal and all the apps in there have been researched and vetted. We have worked with the child development experts to develop a set of criteria for what makes an app safe for a kid. And by safe, I mean not just not going to have someone victimizing them, but safe for their development as well. Um, not addictive and not 
um, interrupting their natural development processes, not exposing them to content that's too intense for them. There's a whole list of criteria that we look at apps through and we label things. If there are any factors that might make an app okay for some kids, but not okay for other kids, um, because there's a wide range of ages and readiness. So some kids are ready for things at different stages and different ages, and we have all those. So the apps in the Pinwheel App Boutique are very clearly described and labeled with, you might want to consider this factor. You might want to consider this factor. Like there's even Google Arts and Culture <laughs> is an app that I, at first, I didn't think anything of it. And then one parent, had a comment at some point about, ah, there's naked statues. And in their family situation, they very much wanted to make sure that their child had no exposure to any sort of nudity at all. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the Google arts and culture description on pinwheel, you see that it, it helps parents understand that there is nudity in this app in the context of art. It's up to you whether that that's okay for your kid or not, but the information is there without you having to go dig through the app or use the app or whatever. It's right there so that you can make that choice. And Pinwheel also allows you to choose not just which apps are available, but when they're available. So if there's an app that you're like, big point, big point. My kid can try this app, it's fine, but you know what? I am only gonna make this app available to them from three to five on weekdays because that's when they're in the kitchen doing homework and it's fine because I'm there making dinner or whatever and I can supervise them and see how it's going. But I don't want them to have access to it while they're at school, it's fine. Pinwheel makes it really easy to schedule that so that you can supervise things in the way they need to be. And I appreciate Pinwheel's uh, kind of the description of, of the different apps, because when you go to the app store, it's like, oh, it's for 12 plus. Well, that doesn't really tell you anything about it. And it doesn't say this is what they're going to be really going to be going to be seeing. Uh, whereas like a movie rating, you know, if it's an R, there's going to be certain things in there. Uh, so having that ability to to uh, yeah. kind of really so parents really understand what their child is doing. The other thing is uh, really limiting the amount of workarounds. And so many apps have you don't you wouldn't even think about uh, would be would be an issue. But if you don't want your child on, say, Facebook or TikTok or whatever, uh, and there's links inside of those those apps that can get them there. And then so you all look at those and say, OK, this is either appropriate or not appropriate. Uh, and, and let people let parents know about that. And I think that's a huge, huge benefit for parents. Thank you. And thank you for mentioning the workarounds and loopholes, because that is one thing that shocked me as a parent when I first started figuring this out, that really most apps, if you click around far enough, there is a way to access unrestricted web content. There's a way to access social media. There's a way to access all of YouTube. There's a way to access all of these things in most apps, yep. not just some of them, most of them. And with Pinwheel, like, I love the fact that the Pinwheel team, they go through, they click on everything, the terms and conditions, the policies, the privacy, the help section, the like every little tiny thing in the apps, somebody's clicked on. And if it's a link that the Pinwheel system can block, they block it before making the app available. And if there's something that they can't block, it goes in the description. So, you know, you know, if your kid, there was a calculator, there was a calculator app <laughs> that if you clicked it, this was, it was insane. There was like three little dots in the upper right hand corner. And if you clicked on it like three times, it took you to a random help page that if you then clicked on this thing, clicked back over here, reloaded that page, it had a login to Facebook. <laughs> Yeah, and that's what you wouldn't think about it. You know, uh, people. You know, I was looking at the uh, the Bible app the other day and looking at all the different uh, links on there that you can get on the website. So it's it's and all all of them have them somewhere, like you said. So it's letting parents know this is where they're at is such a huge, huge thing. And when it's uh, a, and when it's a device that's with them as 
constantly as a phone tends to be, they will find it. That's the thing. Oh, absolutely. Parents absolutely. might go, who is going to click on the three little dots and then go to this and then reload this and then do that? And I'll be honest with you, that particular one is one that one of our teenage users found. Our team yeah. missed that one. And it like it kills us when something gets missed. But that one was so super obscure. Oh, yeah. And now <laughs> like, once that word gets out, it's spreading everywhere. But it's blocked now. Yeah. And so we actually yeah. we offer we, we do sometimes uh, send thank yous and rewards to teenagers who are honest enough to report it to their parents when they find something like that. Because very nice. We, we value their, because honestly, they are persistent and clever and boy, do they find stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> I love having, like, we have pinwheel kids who actually sometimes just because they want to protect their younger siblings, they tell us. So we've got our team and we've got teenagers out there who will tell us when they find stuff like that. So there's a whole community working on that. And it's not just you as a parent by yourself trying to figure out what the danger zones are. Absolutely. That's all. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, can you kind of tell me about, you know, what parents have, you know, we have routines as, as families, we get up at a certain time during the week, we go to school at certain times, we come home at certain times and we have practice or different things. And can you talk about how pinwheels routines can help parents not have to worry about every single time the child leaves their car like oh what are they doing on their phone how, how does pinwheel help with that this i'm so glad you brought that up this is one of my personal favorite things so and just to tie this back to the research just so yeah just so you see just how much of this goes into how kids develop and the research around that the research early on with pinwheel showed that overwhelmingly when kids start begging for phones, they know they want a phone. They know that this is the most important thing in their life, that they get a phone. But when you dig into it, they don't know why. They don't actually know why they want it. They just know they want it, but they don't know why. And one of the things that I adore about routines is that it gives the phone a very real purpose for a child. And that is, you can set up a custom list. And sometimes it's just a to-do list. Sometimes it's actually a step-by-step -step process of something. And you tie it to their schedule. And when it's time for that routine, whatever it is, when they open their phone, it's literally the first thing they see. They can't overlook the you know handwritten chart on the on the refrigerator, they don't have to open an app, they don't have to remember anything. If they look at their phone for any reason, here's their list. And like with my daughter, getting ready for school in the morning, I got so tired of, did you remember to, did you remember to pack your lunch? Do you have your, do you have this? Do you have your notebook? Do you have your, I don't actually have the patience for that. Um, few and, do, few do. Right? <laughs> And it so often turned into just me being exasperated by like, why do I have to tell you this every single day? Even though really she's a child and it takes time to learn these things. And I know that, but in the pressure of the morning, sometimes patience is not my strong suit. But the beautiful thing about routines is that it has taught her to get up in the morning, check the weather, pick appropriate clothing, remembering clean underwear, brush her teeth, brush her hair, all the things step by step. I haven't had to remind her to brush her teeth in the morning in almost a year now. She does it every morning, but I haven't and had to. That's pretty impressive. It, right? <laughs> and I'm like. Mine was about three hours ago. So. <laughs> right? But like, this is the power of routines because it takes, and this is what I mean by it's tied to like, understanding how kids work. And that is, they know that they want this thing. They know that they wanna pick it up and look at it. But they don't know why. But if you give them the routine and it's the first thing they see, it gives it a reason. 
and it helps them build a real world skill to manage something. And they get a little gold star for everyone they check off, like brush your teeth, gold star, brush your hair, gold star. <laughs> and then when they complete the whole routine, like the screen explodes in confetti, which I will tell you, there was one day after my daughter had learned the routine, but she had forgotten to charge the phone. And she was very sad because she was going through her routine and she knew it, but she couldn't get her little gold stars and things. And she was no getting gold very stars. sad about this. <laughs> but here's, here's the fun of that. Because she actually got through the routine and did all the steps, I snuck into my little craft closet where I keep all the stuff and I got some actual confetti. And when she put her backpack on and I knew she had checked it for all the stuff and that was the last step in her morning routine, I threw actual confetti on her. <laughs> it's even better. It's even better. It's great. But like, I so appreciated that like, that matters to her and that she's learned that habit now because of that and then we and she and i now work together on modifying routines for things she knows she's struggling with remembering like, i am a single mom when she's at her dad's house there are things she forgets like she forgets to do certain things at night like to check her homework binder to make sure she did everything so she's like could you put that on my night routine but only for when i'm at dad's because i remember it here so she actually has separate routines for when she's at her dad's house to remind her of things that they both forget. It's really a powerful feature. Routines are, absolutely. it seems like a detail, but in the way kids develop, it can really help with some really real world things. Yeah, it's, it's not something traditionally you would think of with a, uh, with a phone, uh, but like I said, pinwheels, it's a little bit different. So can we yeah. kind of talked about today really how the pinwheel phone can be a teaching tool, how it can help parents really understand what apps are allowing their child to have and have a team of people who are saying that this is not appropriate for your, for, for children and, and give the details exactly why, or uh, at least, at least a little more information saying, if you do it, these are the things you need to be look out for. And then the last one is how you can kind of have a, a solid morning routine and kind of lose the stress of get ready. And I think that's, uh, that's pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome. So Michelle, let me ask you this: Where where can somebody, uh, if they want to, kind of reach out to you and and get a hold of you and ask you questions about Pinwheel? What's the best way to do that? Absolutely. Well, Pinwheel.com is our website, and there's always easy to access everything through there. Um, I also spend a lot of time on Facebook and Facebook groups, um, so people can look for me there. And we have the our own Facebook group is uh, Thriving Families Healthy Tech. There's a Bark Facebook group, and I know y'all work with Facebook too, and then there's your Facebook group. So like, I am I live on Facebook, and I live for talking to parents. So anybody's welcome to find me anytime. Excellent, excellent. And as Pinwheel is one of our, uh, our, our sponsors in the training we're doing with schools, training we're doing with, uh, with parents, youth-involved professional, uh, you can go to pinwheel.com forward slash CST and to learn more about Pinwheel as well. Uh, Miss Shelley, I do appreciate you being here today, and uh, we definitely have you back. Thank you so much. I would gladly come talk to y'all anytime because I agree with you that the learning and the understanding and the conversations that parents and kids have is actually the most important thing. Pinwheel is just a great tool to support that journey. Excellent. All right. You have a great day. Thanks. You too. Bye. <laughs>